Welcome back to the channel and this will be a short video reply to something I saw by Milky Way Outcast and I'll link to his video below. What he basically did was he was watching the power chip videos and he thought about a bit of a replication and I'll tell you a bit more about what he did to the circuit but basically ended up with that. Okay so here's what he's done He's taken the power chip circuit and then just used the circuit in the top left. So he's got rid of the, you know, any connections that go to the right hand side, the diodes and such. And he's also got rid of the final summing section. So we've got a general normal blocking oscillator, quite a familiar type. What he's then done is he's added an LED to the output across the emitter and the collector, such that you can see the output, the output flashes. And then he's actually removed the resistor and the capacitor that would go to the base of the transistor making it just a direct line and it still works and so welcome back to the table and his circuit worked with a hand wound coil I believe it was 19 turns on his I tried to make a couple of coils and yeah it did work okay worked better with a small solar cell rather than just using tap water but I did find that I could do something with this one that his apparently couldn't do. I've got a thousand UH axial inductors, a pair of them on there, and apparently his circuit didn't work like that. Well, here's the bit then, isn't it? Let's see if we can get this one to run on tap water. And what we've got here is a little piece of zinc wire that I'm going to be using for the power chip project, a larger version of it, and a little piece of copper. So if I pick this circuit up now, and I put it in there. Oh, you may have seen a flash already. And what seems to happen is it takes a little while to start up. And I thought this was quite intriguing too. Of course, there's no blocking components in there now, no resistor and no capacitor to the base of the transistor. What we do have, I've got the LED actually plugged into the base and the collector. But um, on the bench in the other room, it started up after a short while, about 30 seconds or so. And I believe the operating principle while we wait is that the capacitor over here charges up to about the 0.6 volts that the transistor needs to fire. At which point it does, it drains down the capacitor and around we go again in a circle. I'll probably have to come back in a minute when it does start up. Well, welcome back from a bit longer than 30 seconds because it's quite interesting. I found out that only if I pinched, held them tight, the axle inductors, would it start up. And I thought, well, there must be a better way of doing that. So I've got some foil and I put that round and the thing has started up. So I don't know whether it's compressing it or I'm not too sure, but the oscillator is running. And in fact, it's not a true oscillator, is it? Because there's no blocking part of the blocking oscillator. It's really quite fascinating what uh, Milky Way Outcast has found out, and thank you very much again for putting me onto this kind of thing. Now the capacitor is just a 10 UF, so really the flash is quite good. From regular tap water, whoops, come back into focus. From regular tap water, and we're getting that kind of flash rate, and uh, with very very simple components. So there we are. It does work. But I think that may have been why he couldn't get the actual inductors to work. So maybe there's a little tip there. But there we go, it does run. Without a capacitor and without a resistor. Okay, thanks very much for watching.